Okay, we're going to be getting the BCF2000 by Behringer running in Cubase 5 in Mackie emulation mode. When you first turn on, it shows the firmware number which you need to update if it's an old one, um, which is fairly easy to do. Apparently, get onto the Behringer site and you can get all the updates there and tools to put it in. I don't think it's that hard. I've only just bought mine, so it's pretty current. Okay, we're going to be in a Mackie emulation mode. This is called BC mode. It's you can tell because it's got presets, P right up to 32, I think. So we don't want that. We'll turn it off and then hold down second button along from the left, top row, turn on again keep holding it down until you get the global setup and this means you can then set up use this control I think you can use anyone I think yeah maybe not okay USB 1 USB 2 USB 3 USB 4 I tried it with the USB to start with it was very unreliable, seemed to be a bit flaky. I don't know if it's the driver or what. I kept reinstalling it. So I've just got my MIDI now going direct into my MIDI input on the PC. No USB stuff. Which means I go to the standalone, which is just keep turning this pot until you get to standalone 4, which is the one we want. And then to exit the setup mode, just press exit there and we're back into Mackie emulation for Cubase NCC. Now we've got to let the computer and the surface controller see each other now. So go to devices menu, device setup, MIDI port setup, there's my MIDI in and there's my MIDI out. We can change the name of that because it's pretty dedicated now. It just goes to the BCF and nowhere else. So now we've renamed it. Um, I haven't got my I've got my keyboard connected to a USB MIDI in and out, which I haven't got installed at the moment, but that's where it would appear there. We can leave it visible so that you can see it within the Cubase program. It'll always pop up as the BCF two thousand. If you uncheck that, you won't see it anymore. And at the moment when you're setting things up it's nice to know what's what. So renaming it and leaving it visible is great get rid of anything Microsoft obviously. Don't check all in MIDI because um, you might start getting your controller controlling MIDI instruments within the program and getting all sorts of funny sounds when you move your faders so leave that unchecked. Next thing we need to do is set up the Mackie controllers. It's the remote devices tab add Mackie control and we now need to look for our MIDI input, which in this case we've named it the BCF2000. MIDI output the same. If we hadn't typed in this, it would come up as the generic name for the MIDI ins and outs. And when we apply, it did what I hoped, and all the sliders have gone to all over the place. We can get out of this menu now. So this is. Cubase 5, I've installed five, 8 audio tracks. And now we have complete control over all of them. Pan as well as volume in all the tracks, which I won't bother showing you them all, because trust me, if one works, they all will. So that's the end of the first part. Um, I want to discuss EQ and VST instrument control within the BCF in the next vids.